Next question is from Fat Husband. What is a good progression for introducing weightlifting to kids and teens? Oh, yeah. Great, great question. Um, now, this is true for anybody. This is true for anybody who's being introduced for weight training, uh, but especially for kids. You want to work on body awareness and control first. It's very important for everybody, but with kids, what you'll find is when you have them balance even a lightweight overhead, uh, you'll notice that they ver- it's, they have poor controls. Like they want to drop the dumbbell on their head. It's, uh, they lack that. So that's the number one thing that you focus on. And the way you'd start with is body weight stuff. Yeah. So you start with hand, you know regular squats and push-ups and body rows and things where they're balancing their whole body. And then from there, the first things that I do with weights are static holds. Yes. Um, so I would have a, my kid, you know, grab a dumbbell, a couple of dumbbells. I'll help them put it in position above their head, and then I'll have them hold it up there, real tight and real strong, for ten seconds. Or I'll have them, you know, hold dumbbells and walk nice and tall. Or I'll have them go down to a squat and have them go maybe halfway down. And hold that position for tense. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get them connected to their body and mm-hmm. get good control. Because once you get the control, then the rest becomes easier. Now you can do the traditional exercises and build them up. And by the way, that control portion builds a lot of strength as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're building a lot of central nervous system uh, strength in your kid. So now as far as uh, sports, if you want something organized, gymnastics is an excellent way to introduce kids to resistance training because it's all body awareness. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I'm glad you brought up the static holds. I, I think I got the most uh, – I, I had my kids, like, were trying to do overhead presses and they were trying to emulate a lot of the workouts and, and movements and things that I was doing in the gym and they'd watch. But uh, then wanting to know more and, like, going through those movements, I found it way more valuable to just slow down and hold the positions first so they really can understand, like, where they need need to tighten in their body, what they need to do to organize things so that they had good control, good, uh, you know, uh, understanding of, of, you know, how to, to, to hold the weight uh, in an overhead, you know, extended position as well, because, you know, that's, that's an opportunity for me to educate too, like how this could then affect, you know, their back if they do it wrong and all these things, it's just, you know, slowing down. I think that, that transition from body weight exercises and, you know, moving and understanding like how to uh, react when they, uh, when they get a good understanding through gymnastics, parkour, you know, something like that, where, uh, you know, they're going through all these like rotational things and like all kinds of different planes of, mo- of motion, uh, once they get through that and then they do the body weight exercises now to load it, it's, it's, it's one of those essential things I've found is to stop and to hold weight, uh, to get really comfortable with that. Uh, and then we can kind of move into, you know, how you're going to organize, uh, moving that weight up and down. I picked this question because it, uh, it had so many likes. Um, so there's obviously a lot of people that want to hear this and I, it, the main reason why I wanted to bring it up is so I could actually, uh, point towards the interview that we did with Chad Wesley mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is Wesley his last name I Chad so. Wesley Smith maybe yeah I, mm-hmm. I, I believe the ju- juggernaut uh, yeah I believe it's Chad Wesley and we did it a long time ago and there, you know every once in a while we have someone on this show that's another fitness professional that like kind of blows my mind or like really opens my eyes to like something and uh, that interview was that like uh, so if you're maybe not, not interested in this topic it's not like the most amazing interview but if you are interested in topic I think it's phenomenal like after talking to him, uh, I've I've made Chad plans. Chad Wesley Smith. Yeah, Chad Wesley, right? So I've made plans for how um, I will take Max through sports, and so swimming and gymnastics is the first thing right away uh, after listening to that. And like he is, if so, if you're looking for something very prescriptive, like at what ages, what types of play they should be doing, what uh, what types of exercise, like he breaks all of that down by the by their years. Like okay, so ages here to here. They should be doing so many seasons of general play. They should be doing this, this much of a specific sport they're into. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that episode is phenomenal for that. And I know Sal already mentioned the gymnastic thing. Like that's a for sure place. And that really, what that is, that's the body awareness. I mean, they're that they're they're honing in on how to move in space. Uh, and gymnastics does that better than any other sport. And so even if you like, you know, people, I told my friends like I was going to get Max, and they're like, gymnast, you want him to be a gymnast? And I'm like, no. I, 
I don't really care if he's a gymnast. I just want him to learn that practice early because for all sports pursuits, that's like the best foundation. It's a great base. Yes. If they if he ends up falling in love with baseball, soccer, basketball, football, tennis, any of these, gymnastics would be a phenomenal yeah. foundation for all those pursuits. Plus, you're less likely to get the overuse uh, injury factor. Like if you introduce them too much, you specialize them too early. Uh, for instance, there's only so many pitches if you're a pitcher. You know, mm-hmm. there's only so many of these repetitive type movements that until it becomes an issue oh, uh, for them later on in their career. So it's like you're shortening the window of their career when, in fact, if you just introduce them to more sports and then kind of make that into like you're honing in towards a specialty, uh, much better approach. Dude, you just reminded me of a conversation. This would have been better in the intro, but I have to bring it up because you just reminded me. So I was with my uh, PTA best friend, right? So he's a physical therapist assistant. So he's uh, rehabbing people all the time. You want to know what is a, a rising major rehab that he has to do right now? What? So, you know, he He's used to seeing people that are like advanced age and had hip surgery and knee surgery, but he's starting to get like kids in their 20s and stuff. Wow. Guess what it is? Is it forward neck and mm-hmm. shoulder? Video game thumbs. Oh, wow. And you, you, Nintendo thumb? You, you, you say about how you only have so many throws. Well, yeah. you, you have only so many freaking, you know, thumb flicks and rotations. And because the kids are playing it so excessively now at wow. such a young age. And it's they getting, getting arthritis and everything yes. from it? Oh, wow. Yeah. He, I forgot what he actually called the, the, the name of what it's called, but it's got a name for that's an embarrassing injury i know right well (laughs) but you know to your point i mean all all these joints they only have they do they have a they have a shelf life in a sense dude you can only do them repetitively so without balance yes yeah if they're balanced they can move they can move a lot but if they're not balanced you're you're, yeah and if you're a kid who's doing four hours of video gaming every single day like that's not there's nothing balanced about that no that's crazy isn't that wild that's that's alarming well you know here's something we didn't touch upon I, i have trained a lot of kids and i will say this it's okay you definitely need to know what you're doing and, and you know do what we just said. But here's another factor that is very important. The workouts need to be short and very enjoyable for kids. Otherwise, you're not it's just not gonna happen. If it's yeah. like come to the workout, do what I say, yeah. um, it's gonna be very difficult to build that relationship with exercise. Now, sometimes you do have to tell your kids, sorry, we gotta go work out and they have to listen to you. But then when you're doing it, put on fun music, have great conversations play games in between. Don't treat it super, super seriously because if it's super unenjoyable, um, they're not going to want to continue to do it on their own. And of course, you can't always be there to, to train your kids. So try to create a a fun environment yeah. and you can make play exercise. heavy. And then, you know, when they have questions, that's an opportunity for you to educate. Exactly.